right, hey everyone, and welcome to another morning of Breakfast by the Bay. My name is Letty, and we have Chris behind the, ha uh, behind the camera, as always. And today, I have a very exciting topic for you. We're gonna be talking all about freshwater turtles uh, in Rhode Island. Uh, so we've done a couple other t uh, videos about turtles before, but today we're just going to narrow the scope and only talk about turtles that live in fresh water. Before we get to that, um, if you're watching and you can hear me okay, and if you can see everything, just give us some likes, give us uh, some thumbs up, and leave some comments just so we know that you're there and watching. Uh, so, before we actually dive into talking about freshwater turtles, you might think, why would we be talking about freshwater turtles? The key word being freshwater. You know, we talk a lot about Narragansett Bay and how we have brackish water there, but there's two big reasons I wanted to talk to you about freshwater turtles today. One, uh, in the Narragansett Bay watershed, which is a crucial part of Narragansett Bay, if you remember, that's all of the land and water that drains into Narragansett Bay, there are a ton of turtles that live there, and they're really affected by water quality in Narragansett Bay. So I wanted to talk for, uh, about them for that one reason. And secondly, it's spring. It's finally starting to get nice outside, and that means turtles are emerging right now. We can see a ton of different turtles right now if you just go to a body of water, a freshwater body of water, and um, you know, I would like for you to know what's the deal with these turtles and how to identify them. Uh, so Captain Chris, do we have people watching right now? I yeah, I got at least a dozen. Uh, Reagan just said she can hear you and see you, and good morning to both you and I. Thank you, Reagan. <laughs> uh, cool. So, first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about where we are. Right now, you might recognize it. We're at the Exploration Center and Aquarium in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, so, this is where we have all of our animals that were found in Narragansett Bay or in the Narragansett Bay watershed. And actually, at this aquarium, we have six different types of turtles. So I'm only going to be talking about three of the freshwater turtles today, but I did want to give you a quick intro into the other turtles, the turtles, or at least show them to you because why not? We're here, right? So uh, Chris, if you could follow me right over here yeah. and just uh, take a sneak peek at these turtles right here. If you have been tuning in to Breakfast by the Bay, you might recognize these little guys as our diamondback terrapins. Uh, so. Big thing I want to point out first and foremost, a terrapin is an animal that tends to live in coastal estuaries. So that means that they're going to be living in more brackish water. Part of their life cycle could be in fresh water, uh, but these ones in particular really do like that brackish water. If you want to learn more about our diamondback terrapins, please refer back to our Breakfast by the Bay that Miss Jess did all about these really cool guys. Um, I'm not going to get too into them today, but they are definitely worth investigating. Yeah, right? I also think we're going to be giving them some food right now. They look kind of hungry. Yeah, it's feeding time here at the EC, so the animals are very excited. Oh, there's Phyllis. She's eating. <laughs> Phyllis. Old Phyllis. Uh, all right, so those are our diamondback terrapins. The next animal I want to show you is actually pretty weird because this turtle is not from Rhode Island. So I only want to talk about native species today. Those are the ones that I'm really going to take a dive into. But this turtle right over here, Cleo, is a river cooter. Uh, it's crazy that we have her here for a couple different reasons. One, river cooters do not live in Rhode Island, and she was found right out on Easton's Beach. Easton's Beach is a salty habitat, and she is a freshwater turtle. Once she was found, she had signs that she had just hatched. So that means that there could be a pair of mating river cooters right here in the area. Now, when we found her, we, um, when we found her, we asked a lot of people, like, what is this? Local people did not know, and we actually had to send her picture all around the country to find out what she was, because it was so weird that she was here. 
So that's Cleo. She is a river cooter. Um, not too much else to say about her except that if you want to know more about it, there's plenty of information on the web, but she is not native to Rhode Island, so we're just going to leave her be in her tank for now. All right, awesome. And then the last turtle that I want to show you that we're not really going to be talking about today is our turtle, Bowser. Everyone's favorite snapping turtle. Oh, he's, he's hiding, hiding a little bit right now behind his filter. But Bowser is a common snapping turtle. Uh, he has been with Save the Bay for a very long time. He's about eight years old, <laughs> and he cannot be released back into the wild. So he's here all the time. He's going to live his life out here. Um, now, Bowser already got a starring role in our video all about mutants. He's not necessarily a teenage mutant ninja turtle yet because he hasn't learned karate and he's only eight years old, but he's on his way there. So uh, if you want to learn more about Bowser, please refer back to our mutants video, which was a Breakfast by the Bay we did a few weeks ago. So. Those are three turtles that we have here. I just wanted to show them to you, but we're not going to be talking about them too much today. So we'll head back right over here. Awesome. And so now we can kind of dive into freshwater turtles. One thing I want to say is that um, you're actually going to be getting a lot of herpetology this week with Save the Bay's Breakfast by the Bay. Um, herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians, and today you have to learn all about turtles, but on Thursday, if you're interested in amphibians, our, uh, my friend Jeff is going to be doing a video all about amphibians and focusing on some frogs. So that'll be pretty exciting. If you're interested in that, definitely tune in. So, freshwater turtles. Um, when we're talking about freshwater turtles, there's a couple things you want to know to separate them from some other turtles in the world. Turtle is an umbrella term for a lot of different kinds of animals, um, like tortoises and sea turtles and terrapins, as we saw before. And I'm going to explain the difference in just a second. But first, if we're talking about freshwater turtles, we are talking about turtles that need both land and water to complete their life cycle. That means that they will come up on land a lot of the time to lay eggs, uh, but they also need that water in order to hunt, swim around, and actually the water is where they end up hibernating for the winter. That's pretty cool. Next, uh, I said before that turtles are reptiles. Because if we're talking about herpetology, we're talking about the study of reptiles and amphibians. So turtles do fall into that category. So they're kind of like snakes and lizards in that way. But I wonder if anyone could guess what the big difference between turtles, snakes, and lizards is. It's their shell. So they have a bony shell surrounding their body. Now, when I was a kid, I actually thought that turtles had their shell, but they could crawl out of it whenever they wanted. Uh, I did learn eventually that that's not true. Their vertebrate is actually attached, or their vertebrae is actually attached to that shell. So that means that their bones are all fused together to that shell. So they're in that shell when they're born and they're in that shell when they die. It's their entire life. So their shell is a really important part of what makes a turtle a turtle. Next, uh, freshwater turtles are not tortoises or sea turtles. So a tortoise is an animal or a type of turtle that spends most of its life on land. A sea turtle will be living in the ocean, spends most of its life in the ocean. So the easiest way to tell if you're looking at a turtle, a tortoise, or a sea turtle is to look at its feet. So a tortoise is normally going to have stumpy legs so it can walk around on land. You can kind of imagine elephant feet, but like really shrunk down to fit that turtle size. Then we have sea turtles, and if you look at a sea turtle's feet, they have flippers because they're spending most of their life in the water. But as we'll learn soon, a freshwater turtle will have feet that are kind of webbed, so they spend a lot of their life in the water, but they're still able to get around on land pretty easily. So that's that. Uh, next, 
All turtles lay eggs, but freshwater turtles do as well. So they'll lay their eggs typically on land, uh, and then the turtles will hatch, and there's absolutely no parental care. Once those turtles hatch, they're on their own. Next, um, turtles spend, or freshwater turtles spend a large majority of their life doing these three things, resting, basking, and foraging. So I have a lot in common with turtles in that regard. <laughs> so uh, they're resting, they're conserving their energy. Basking means that they'll be out in the sun absorbing the heat. So they want to find a sunny spot. You might have seen them on a log before, kind of just resting there with their head up in the air. And that's them warming up because turtles are ectothermic. So something like a mammal, like us, we're endothermic. Endothermic means that we can regulate our own body temperature. It stays very consistent. But an ectothermic animal its body temperature is dependent on the habitat or environment that it's in. So if a turtle wants to warm up, it has to go out into that sunshine in order to do so. Um, I wasn't gonna talk about this too much, but it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, turtles are in Rhode Island all year long, right? But have you ever seen a turtle in the winter? I haven't. So turtles, when the winter comes, it is really cold. If they're out of the water during that time, there's a good chance that they won't be able to warm up enough in order to survive. So they actually go to the bottom of a body of water and hang out there all winter by slowing down their breathing and slowing down their metabolism. So they can actually stay underwater for up to 100 days during the winter. It's a lot easier for them to stay warm underneath the water. So that's pretty cool, that's crazy, right? They breathe oxygen and yet they can stay underwater for a hundred days. Uh, so they're resting, they're basking, and then finally they're foraging. So that means that they're just looking for some food to eat. Uh, most turtles are omnivores. Uh, so that means that they'll eat plants and animals. We're gonna eat those three different turtles later and I'll talk about kind of what their diet is, but we can generally call them omnivores just like us. Uh, then finally, people might wanna know what predators do turtles have? You know, they have that really hard shell and they're really good at hiding inside of that shell, but some animals do still manage to eat them. Uh, birds, first off, we might have some birds of prey that would be interested in turtles. Raccoons, raccoons just eat everything. Skunks, coyotes, minks, and even dogs. I know my dog's been curious about some turtles on walks before, so there we go. Uh, Chris, do we have any questions before I move on to the anatomy of turtles? Um, well, Mackenzie wanted to let everybody know that she's been doing some resting and basking and foraging recently as well. <laughs> um, and there was a question about the size of some oh, of the. Self-care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a question about some of the, the sizes that the turtles that we uh, met just a moment ago will reach, but maybe we can talk about sizes when we get into some of the other uh, species that we're meeting up close in just a moment. Yeah, definitely. One thing I can say, I'm not totally sure about the river cooter. Um, like I said, that's not a turtle that lives in Rhode Island. Diamondback terrapins are pretty tiny turtles. I think they get up to like seven or eight inches, something like that. Uh, snapping turtles are the biggest turtles that we have in Rhode Island by far. They get really big. Um, so I wish I had an exact measurement for you, but I could probably give you that later. Yeah, we'll check it out later yeah. and make sure to reply to that question in the, in the comments after the video is done. Exactly. Uh, but I will be telling you specifically how big the other turtles can get, the ones that we'll be seeing today, because you'll know exactly how big they can grow. So, okay. great question. Um, so, if we're talking about turtles, there are some specific things that make a turtle a turtle. Uh, now, we want to remember, too, that all sea turtles, all tortoises, and all terrapins are turtles, so this applies to them as well, or a lot of this applies to them as well. Mostly just the feet is the different part. So, if we start at the head, turtles have a beak. They do not have any teeth. It's a really hard beak that's made out of keratin, the same thing that our fingernails are made out of. So, they have that hard beak, helps them eat, especially all those like hard critters they might be eating under the water. Next, the turtle has its shell. 
As I said before, that shell is fused to its bones. That means that the shell cannot be separated from the turtle. Um, and the top of the shell has its own specific name, as does the bottom. The top shell is called a carapace, and the bottom of the shell is called its plastron. And a lot of times you can look at the plastron of a turtle and actually find out if it's a male or a female. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Finally, uh, or not finally, next we have the scoots. So if you have ever seen a turtle before, you might notice that it has a kind of intricate shell pattern. Uh, so these are layers of keratin that make up that really hard shell. Um, and so the scoots are a good way of actually identifying a lot of different turtles. And the scoots also normally have some pretty colors on it, a really great design, or a really unique shape. So interesting. Next, uh, the skin. If you've ever seen a lizard before, maybe any kind of reptile, like a snake too, a turtle has the same type of skin as them. It's going to be dry, and it's going to be scaly. Turtles can actually shed some of that skin when they're growing, just like a snake or a lizard would, so that's pretty cool. Finally, we have the feet of a freshwater turtle. This is the only part that really separates the turtle, uh, the freshwater turtle from the sea turtles and the terrapins. Um, the turtles will have those kind of like sharp, longer toes, but all of them will be webbed so that they can easily swim through the water. Like I said, a tortoise is going to have those stumpy feet, and a sea turtle is going to have those flippers. Very cool. Uh, all right, so now that we kind of know a little bit about these turtles, um, I'm going to actually tell you which turtles we're going to be meeting today. And you're going to need a little bit of this vocabulary when I am talking about these turtles. But don't worry, I'll definitely repeat myself. Uh, so. If we go over here, I've just ran out all of the native turtles to Rhode Island. Uh, we do have some invasive turtles in Rhode Island, which means they're turtles that came from somewhere else and they could possibly be taking over populations of turtles that have always been here. But I don't want to talk about those. I just want to talk about the turtles that have been here forever. Uh, so, native turtles of Rhode Island. We met the diamondback terrapin, right? That's the one that lives in estuaries our snapping turtle, much like Bowser. Uh, we have box turtles, and we have wood turtles. We don't have those at the aquarium, unfortunately, but they're very cool if you ever want to look up some pictures. And so today, for the turtles that we're going to meet, we have an eastern painted turtle, we have a spotted turtle, and we have a stink pot or musk turtle. So you can kind of use the term stink pot turtle or musk turtle. Totally depends on how you're feeling. Uh, an eastern painted turtle, its scientific name is Chrysemius picta picta. So it actually is, um, there's actually a lot of different types of painted turtles in the United States. You can actually find them coast to coast, not consecutively, but for the most part. And so there's like, four or five different types of painted turtles that you can find in the United States, but every region has its own specific type of painted turtle. And its name literally just translates to gold freshwater painted tortoise. Tortoise uh, kind of was just the interchangeable word that was used um, in Latin. So that's why a lot of these translate to tortoise. Next, we have the spotted turtle, which is one of my favorites. This turtle has a lot of yellow spots all over its carapace. And that one just translates to tortoise spots. So Clenius guttata. Guttata, you see in a lot of scientific names for animals, and that means spot. Chris said before that our eastern stargazer. Just the, yeah, no, it's a northern stargazer. Oh, is yeah, Ast northern. Astroscopus guttatus, which means one that's spotted and stares at the stars. Yeah, I love those little translations. Yeah. Uh, finally, our stink pot turtle, or our musk turtle, uh, it's Sternotherus odoratus, which means a wild animal with a sternum and has an odor. <laughs> uh, I like this one a lot because a stink pot or musk, those are both kind of smelly words, right? Uh, and that pretty much is accurate for a musk turtle because if you catch them in the wild, they'll actually release a musky smell. 
to ward off predators. So pretty good defense mechanism, mechanism if you ask me. Uh, all right, so I think it's time to get down to it and actually meet these turtles that we've been talking about. Awesome. Uh, I wonder, are any of them your favorite? Samantha was wondering, what's your favorite kind of turtle? My favorite kind of turtle? Um, it is actually the spotted turtle. Oh, we're going to meet that in just a second then. We're going to meet it in just a second. So I do have turtles that I like that don't live in Rhode Island. But if we're talking about native turtles of Rhode Island, it's a spotted turtle. You'll see that it's really beautiful. And I'm going to be talking about the conservation of these animals in a little bit. And it's actually become kind of a collector's item in uh -huh. like wild turtle poaching field. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. And you'll actually get to meet my favorite turtle. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. Um, so. Here is the first turtle that we are going really? to meet. I'm actually going to take it out. Uh, the one thing I'm going to mention about this turtle is that he is a little bit shy, so I'm not going to handle him too, too much, but I do want to show you a couple notable things about him. So, if anyone was um, guessing from home as to what kind of turtle this is, you might be able to. This is a very common turtle in Rhode Island. Some might say the most common. And this is our painted turtle. So if you look at him and look at his shell, you can kind of look like he has a lot of paint strokes all over him. It really does look like he was painted together. Uh, so there's a couple notable things about him. First off, if we look at his carapace, that's the top part of his shell right here. You can see that it is black with red markings on the outer edge. So you see those white spots, or those red spots right there. Very nice. And then his skin, these can either have like a dark green or a black color to it. And it's normally striped with red and yellow. So you see that red stripe right on there, on his legs. And then you can always tell it's a painted turtle because you can see on the side of his face, he has those two yellow lines coming yeah. down from his eye on both sides. So that awesome. is a classic painted turtle. So male and female painted turtles are a little hard to tell the difference between because normally if you're talking about turtles, you can look at their plastron um, and I'll show you this with a spotted turtle. But the painted turtle, um, the only way to really tell the difference is by looking at its front claws and its tail. <laughs> Which he doesn't want to show either of. Which he doesn't want to show either of. So a uh, painted turtle, if it's a male, is going to have really long arms for the front. Yep, that's good. Even longer than a female. <laughs> so you can see that he has really long arms, really long claws, and then its tail is going to be thick and long. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to... Maybe. Maybe when they're back down in the... Yeah, in the bin, we'll take a look. Back down. So this is going to be a male painted turtle. It's a little hard to tell if you haven't seen a um, male or female painted turtle up close before, you know, saying like what is a long claw and what's a long tail. But once you see a few of them, it gets a little bit easier. So that is a male painted turtle right there. So these guys can grow anywhere between four inches to 10 inches long. So they can get pretty big. Uh, and these are probably the turtles that you see most often in Rhode Island. They can really commonly be seen resting on logs or rocks that are in the water because they want to absorb all of that sun. But something you might notice about painted turtles is that if you get too close to them, they're very skittish. They will be the first turtle to jump in the water if they are disturbed. A uh, silly thing about them is that a lot of the times you can actually see the turtles piling on top of each other on the rock. If real estate is limited, there's not enough um, log space or rock space, the painted turtle will climb on top of the log, realize there's not much space, and just climb on top of one of his friends. So that's pretty funny. Uh, if you ever want to find them, you know, you can find them in most wetlands. You can find them in rivers and marshes, lakes, ponds, streams. They are incredibly common in all of those areas. Um, and my favorite thing about painted turtles is that they actually have this really elaborate courtship dance. So when a male is trying to find a female, uh, they do this thing where they dance around in the water together. He'll actually take his claws and stroke the face of the female. Like they're kind of face to face, staring into each other's eyes, stroking 
the face. So that's pretty silly. And they'll do this for hours at a time. Very cute. Very cute. So this is our Eastern Painted Turtle. Awesome. So that's right. Chris, if you could just get a little close up of that for a second. Yeah, and uh, so Janine was wondering a couple things that, is it, uh, you're touching these right now because we have them in the uh, aquarium, but is it okay to be touching them in nature? Was it something you would recommend? Yeah, that's a great question. I was gonna talk about that in a little bit, but I could definitely talk about it now. So um, turtles are an animal that has been, they've been really, over hunted, I don't want to use the word hunted, but over collected for people that might want to have them as pets. Turtles live for a pretty long time. Um, a lot of them can live up to 25 to 30 years. So the people want them as pets, but then realize they're going to be around for a really long time. And if you ever have a turtle and bring it home and want to have it as a pet and then try and release it, it's not going to survive. There's just no way. Uh, so, if you ever see a turtle in nature, the best thing to do is just watch from a distance and enjoy it that way. Uh, they can be really serene just to watch on those rocks or swimming in the water. Uh, so if you do see one, it's really best to just let it do its thing. If you see it wandering around on land, it could be trying to get to a spot to lay its eggs. Uh, so, best not to disturb it. Um, just yeah. let them be. That's a really great question. Thank you for your concern, Janine. The only thing I would add to that is, as Letty said, this is the time of year where these guys are starting to emerge and walk around. You might see some crossing roads. I've already had to stop once, uh, so I didn't run one over. So if you do need to help one cross a road, it would be okay to just be gentle and pick it up and move it to the side. And you definitely want, if you have some hand sanitizer around these days, use that afterwards. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's tough because a lot of turtles um, need to leave a wet in order to find a place to lay its eggs and a lot of the times a road could be a barrier for that so if you do see one crossing the road um, you know use your best judgment if you think it needs help crossing or you're afraid that something could happen help it but otherwise if it seems okay just let it be it's very easy uh, so next this is my favorite turtle this is a spotted turtle now if you look right here you can tell that its name is pretty apt. So you look right on its shell. It is a black turtle. It could be dark green or black, and it has little yellow spots all over it. Uh, so it won't just have spots on its carapace. It can actually have spots on its body as well. It's kind of hard to see. There's a couple it, on the head. There's a couple on the head, and you can see a couple on the leg. So it will definitely have spots on its carapace. And then it will definitely have spots on its legs and head as well as it grows older. So um, when these turtles are born, typically they'll just have one spot per scoop, which is pretty adorable. Just a little dot on each one. Um, for anyone who likes order like me, that sounds great. And then um, as it grows older, it can have up to a hundred spots on its body. So, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so if we're looking at this turtle, if you wanna tell if it's a male or a female, they are a lot easier to tell than a painted turtle. First off, if you look at the plastron, I'm gonna put it to the side a little bit. I don't know yeah. if you can. I got it. Okay, great. Yeah. So this turtle, you can see that it's plastron is kind of indented. So it's not flat like the painted turtle was. It actually goes in. We call that concave. So that means that this is a male spotted turtle. Uh, that is an easy way to tell and it all, that uh, concave plastron actually applies to a bunch of different turtles. If you look at it and it's concave like that, there's a very good chance that it is a male. Um, and then with a spotted turtle, you can also tell if it's a male or a female because the male has brown eyes and a female will have orange eyes. Uh -huh. So that's pretty nice, pretty alluring. Um, so these guys are very popular in the animal trade industry. I mean, they're just so beautiful. You see those spots on them. They're kind of a collector's Oops. item for people. I just turned the camera around on myself. Man, classic. Nobody turtles. wants to see me, we want to see the turtle. <laughs> so uh, this spotted turtle was actually rescued from a pet store. So a lot of pet stores try and sell turtles. They'll collect them from the wild or get them um, some other way. And then they'll try and sell them as pets. But it's actually not allowed. 
Um, these guys are threatened or endangered. I can't remember where they are in the conservation spectrum, but they are not allowed to be collected from the wild. So this guy was at a pet store, he was rescued by DEM, and then given to us by DEM. Now you have to remember, I said before, that if you have a turtle as a pet and try and release it, it's probably not gonna survive. So he's gonna live out his life at the aquarium. Uh, we take really good care of him, but um, if you ever see a spotted turtle, 100% best just to leave it out there. Yeah. Now, I said before, if you ever see a painted turtle on rocks or logs, they'll be really quick to jump in the water. But the funny thing about spotted turtles is if you see them out in the water, maybe basking in the sun, they're pretty casual about getting back in the water. They're not too concerned with running back in. He'll probably just kind of oop, 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 like go back in very slowly. But, um, oh, there we go. I'm gonna put him back in for a second. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty slow to go in. Um, so this guy, he is also an omnivore. He's gonna be eating green algae, grasses, crustaceans, spiders, earthworms, uh, insect larvae, tadpoles, salamanders, and sometimes even small snakes if he can get his hands on them. Um, and he's gonna be spending a lot of his time in vernal pools, like shallow wetland habitats, marshes and swamps. Um, and spring is absolutely the best time to find a spotted turtle. This is when they are the most active. Uh, so if you're trying to find a spotted turtle and you want to enjoy one from a distance, now would be the time to do so. You can just visit any of those areas when you have a chance to go ahead and okay. find a spotted turtle. Great. So now we are going to talk about our musk turtle. So, as I mentioned before, a musk turtle is named so because when disturbed, he gives off a musky smell. I, so far, have not experienced that. Yeah, I'm not smelling anything yet either not from over here. I think he's like feeling that. pretty comfortable. He's feeling pretty comfortable. So the thing you should know about this musk turtle is he is 28 years old. And he was actually born from an egg in captivity and then kept as a pet. So um, this was 12, 30 years ago almost. So um, those eggs were collected. They definitely weren't supposed to be, but they were. And he was born and he was kept as a pet, but uh, the person could not take care of him. Um, and they turned it over to the aquarium. Uh, and now, once again, he is a resident here. He's 30 years old. He's been living a pretty good life. And he actually lives in the same enclosure as our spotted turtle. So they get along pretty well. And I also think that's a reason why he's not musking too much, <laughs> is because he is so used to human contact. He's lived his whole life like that. And surrounded by friends. Yes. And also, let's remember, like, you know, if you find one in the wild, they're actually a really aggressive turtle, which is kind of silly because they're one of the smallest turtles in Rhode Island. They can be anywhere between three and a half to five and a half inches, but five and a half is kind of where they max out. Uh, so the fact that he's so tiny and super aggressive kind of reminds me of like a chihuahua or something. Um, so if we're taking a look at our musk turtle, he is a lot different looking than the other ones. First thing, if you look at him head on, head on, you can see that his shell goes a lot higher than the other turtles. Um, if you look at some musk turtles, it actually looks like their shells come to a V shape at the very top. Now this is the only kind of musk turtle, this is the common musk turtle, um, it's the only kind that occurs above the Mason-Dixon line. There are a ton of different musk turtles that live in the southern states, but here we only have this guy. Now he is generally carnivorous, so while I said most freshwater turtles are omnivores, he is, but if he is choosing what he wants to eat, he is going to be eating um, He's going to be eating mostly meat, so that's like, bot he's like a bottom feeder, he eats snails, clams, larvae, um, dragonfly nymphs, beetles, leeches, minnows, tadpoles, worms, fish eggs, fish. If you, he can find it, he's going to eat it, <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Now, one hilarious thing that I read about stink pot turtles in my herpetology book was that if you're ever kayaking and a turtle falls on your head, there's a good chance it's a musk turtle. And that's because they like to climb up onto logs that are kind of higher, like above the water line. And then they'll 
see you coming, kind of panic and try and get back in the water, but then they fall on your head. So if you ever have a turtle fall on your head, there's a very good chance that it's a musk <laughs> turtle. <laughs> uh, and if you're trying to figure out if it's a musk turtle other than it's falling on top of your head, uh, first off, this is the only turtle in Rhode Island that has that really high shell like that. Um, and then if you look at his face, you can see that it's very pointy in the front, right? And on this guy, it's not too obvious, but they do have white lines going from their eye back into their shell. And they also have that red at the bottom, more white lines. So that is very distinct for a musk turtle. How's he doing on camera? Is he looking good? Looking great. Perfect. Uh, so he's normally found in kind of like sluggish waters. He doesn't really like water, like moving over his shell all the time. He wants something with a muddy bottom. So that's like, um, you know, swamps, uh, ponds, lakes, ditches, or even like canals. That's where he would want to be. And he's gonna spend a good amount of his life underwater. He does not come up that often. Um, he stays underwater and actually most turtles are turtles are diurnal that means that they are active during the day he's actually pretty active at night that's when he does a lot of his hunting for those animals that he's eating um, and then finally like I said before he's like highly territorial and aggressive so musk turtles like to have their space and if anything comes into their space they'll generally defend it so that's pretty interesting all right, so I was going to wrap up by talking about conservation a little bit. Um, those are the three turtles, painted turtles, spotted turtles, musk turtles. All of these guys came to us either from pet stores or from illegal poaching of turtles. That means collecting them so that you can bring them home and kind of have them as like a decorative piece. Um, I mentioned it before, but it's worth saying again, you know, if you want to have a turtle, there are you know, totally legitimate means to get them. But generally, you never want to take one from the wild and take it home as a pet. They're, first off, hard to take care of. And also, um, you know, a lot of these turtles are endangered or threatened. Maybe they're um, worried about habitat loss. You know, a lot of their homes are being taken away. So it's really just best to leave them where they are and do their thing. Uh, so, do we have any other questions about turtles? Yeah, there was one more question a little while ago. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, Janine was wondering if they, they get new scoots or the scoots grow with them with their shells. Uh, yeah. That was the only other question we didn't answer. That's a great question. Uh, so, when they're growing, they do shed their scoots. I did read that some turtles don't do this, but a majority of them do. There's construction going on. <laughs> yeah, that, sorry about so that, guys. I'm talk a little bit louder. Uh, but these turtles, when they're growing bigger, actually when they're like crawling around on those logs and stuff, they kind of shed off naturally that way um, and they're kind of just layered so they can grow new ones so that's a really great question that's part of their life cycle is shedding their scoops and growing new ones uh, all right I'm gonna let everyone go um, I hope that you enjoyed our video today learning a little bit about turtles um, learning about some freshwater animals that we have around Narragansett Bay watershed um, if you've been enjoying what we're doing you know we always have our donate link at the bottom of this page but otherwise just sharing our video and telling people about Save the Bay we always really appreciate that uh, so until tomorrow for our next breakfast by the bay I will bid you adieu and uh, we will probably see you next week